Hi, welcome to this unboxing video for Ohm Machina Arcana, the second edition. This is a premium second edition. Actually, the standard second edition is almost like premium. It has some additional content, but nevertheless, this is the second edition overall of the game. The game comes from a, 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 a renovated and upgraded edition from 2014, now in this latest 2019 version. Very rich thematic with a very rich narrative and a dark horror theme. In this game, the players take the roles of adventurers with a single role trying to explore an origin, a scenario of a location that it's not known where it comes from. The origin of the surroundings is not known. The theme is uh, obviously dark, uh, inspired heavily by Lovecraft's Cthulhu Mythos uh, setting with a lot of steampunk injections infused into the theme. Uh, the, the goal of the adventures is to collaborate. This is a co-op game to try to gather equipment, interact with the environment and utilize everything they find on their way to become stronger, become more efficient, to write the story because it has a very thick and very um, rich story that goes together side by side by the, by the whole game. The game can play in different scenarios that they all bind together to give a very well and um, cool experience that actually reaches a climax at the end when you have to face the final, uh, let's say, boss or the final monster. You'll be facing a lot of monsters during the course of the game, which is quite cool and you have to level up uh, carefully, but you have to rush as well because if you are too slow, evil will prevail and will catch up and nail you and destroy you. So the main goal is to give you a chilling experience with a lot of uh, theme and a lot of things to think of, of all packed in a horror Cthulhu uh, inspired setting. Also there are a lot of steampunk uh, references in there. So the game plays from 1 to 4 players, lasts about 150, 150 minutes. It can be played as uh, different scenarios but also combined as a complete uh, campaign. I think you can also save in between the game and this is very cool as well. Um, the game is developed uh, over the years and also in this latest version a lot of changes have been done graphically, uh, a lot of improvements in the rules and clarifications, so it's an overall improvement of an actual already cool and uh, robust game which got a lot of uh, good hype and uh, good comments uh, throughout the last five years and that's something important for the history of the game to know. So uh, the game is uh, obviously a thematic Cthulhu based co-op game which uh, touches heavily the, on the adventure category. It uses dice, dice and exploration. The theme is fantasy obviously and horror. The main mechanisms of the game is action point uh, and co-op game. We roll a lot of dice trying to, to do different things in the game. We move on a grid and you're going to see the amazing, absolutely amazing art on the tiles. I love them. This is the, th the first thing that they drew me into this fantastic world and I'm looking forward to explore it further. The game plays also as a fantastic solo and it belongs in the general dungeon crawling uh, Cthulhu Mythos uh, category games. So that's that. Let's delve um, a bit more in the game and let's dive into what's inside the box after my long introduction. But I hope I gave you a quite good understanding of what the game is about because I admit I didn't know a lot about the game. I found out by following different links and uh, trying to pinpoint the origin of this tremendous amazing art and it was for a good cause because it led me to this uh, beautiful game. So I'm really happy to start um, exploring more about uh, the game overall. So, uh, this is the, the box of the game. I like the fact that it's uh, a bit dark, a bit uh, mysterious, let's say. There is a lot of gears in there, some tentacles and some blood stains on this wall cover, stone or whatever, some cracks. So, overall, it's very cool. Uh, cover with not a lot of color, but it's a dark horror game. So that's what we'd expect from a game of this category uh, From production point of view the box is quite thick looks sturdy matte finish linen finish um, Material it will guarantee that the game would last a lot on your shelf and your library and can take quite a lot of beating 
Okay, so we have various things uh, and very some additional things obviously about uh, the extras in this uh, premium edition like the recurrence, the geometry of the void, the charges, the flippable explorers, evocations and the binding horror events. Various things that we're going to explore further uh, by delving into the details of the game. Today we're just going to go through the components, the materials and what we see in a bit around the art. Which did I mention I love it? Yeah. Okay, the game manual. Now, this is a game manual. It has an overview at the beginning. There is a very simple uh, chart here. We have the explorer phase, then we have the spawn phase, then we have the power phase, the horror phase, sorry, and then we have the monster phase. So, explorer, spawn, horror, monsters. It's very simple and goes around and around. Okay, so components. A very detailed breakdown of the components, what you have inside. Scenario-based components are here, because depending on the scenario, the final uh, boss that you will have to, you will have to face is different, and it has a, a, a different style, which goes together with the scenario. There are seven uh, very detailed, highly detailed, and gorgeously illustrated tiles. We're going to have a quick look on those. A chapter board, where we flip the cards going through the chapter. Four player boards, recessed, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to see. Just wait a bit and we discover together. Lots of cards, explorer cards, monster cards, the core explorer events, the core horror events. And then we have weapons. The, I don't see because I'm seeing the opposite. What's that? The apparel, the artifacts and the consumables. Lots of things and lots of gears that we can use in our fight against evil. Now, uh, compared to different to the other games, this game has standees. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of standees, but in this game, the way I see it and the, all the pictures and videos and uh, mat media material I've covered for the game to, to go in before deciding to hunt it down, really made me decide that I would I preferring to have standees with beautiful art in this game because everything is so stunning and so vivid that uh, if I would had minis they would take the shine out of the beautiful uh, beautifully illustrated game so specifically for this game I really don't mind having standees and I actually might prefer them more than uh, um, minis okay lots of uh, tokens different tokens and here we go a bit more on the component overview. We have the anatomy of uh, the explorer card, different explorers for our heroes essentially. The anatomy of the monster card with different explanation for the different things that we see on the card. A big portion of the card is art. I really like when this is uh, done and the iconography is clear as well. The chapter cards have a lot of story, a lot of narrative to go through as you flip uh, going through the different chapters. This is the explorer uh, board. We put our character card here. We have stats that we uh, measure and track on this recess board track uh, tracks on the right. Some event cards here with a lot of text and fluff. And here is how the game uh, tile, the map tile looks. This is tremendously well illustrated. I can't emphasize enough the detail, the lights, the colors, the selection of uh, uh, different items. I'm going to spend a lot of time on showing you the tiles because I really think that they are among the best in the industry and the most uh, carefully illustrated and really make justice to the theme of the game. And this is the character, the chapter board at the end. Okay. I like that uh, you see there's a lot of things explained on the setup. You have numbered instructions so you can follow them and quickly go into the details. Now, one cool thing that the game has is when you uh, play this uh, map tile which is quite big you'll see then you can push it and start moving to the next one so it has like some kind of exploration sense while you move from one big tile to the other one uh, which is quite cool now uh, we choose a scenario we choose explorers we set up uh, the item deck then we set up the monster deck do different things that the scenario construct uh, instructs us to do and then we go again to the same simplified main um, breakdown of the phases, the explorer phase, the spawn phase, the horror phase, and then the master's phase. 
a bit of more details on each of those phases. And then we have some more discussion about the units. Lots of explanation, lots of things about what's he what is health, what is armor, the icon is clear here, uh, what is will, yeah, what is the incense, the stamina, etc. And then we have a bit of more going around the abilities of the explorer. You can see some items and some numbers uh, that are below uh, the graphical portion of the card and what those mean, these markers. Then we have the unit um, effects, explain. The rulebook is very rich, has a lot of examples and like I like the illustrations. Now, here we have the map tile. You see how we set up the board. We have four boards here and then you can move from one to the other as you explore portions of the map. Additional details. The art is really, really cool. Here's the gear. I like the fact that it's not bombarded with color and uh, it looks like a schematic and a drawing of some sorts of... Uh, it could be a part of a mystical tome. This is what I'm trying to say, so it fits the theme excellently. Well done, you see, really nice. And then we have the chapter. The event, the abilities, and some more final details. Explained the monster behavior, how the monster moves, the monsters, and the table of contents at the end. This is um, also there are a lot of things to remind you at the back of the rulebook. This is a very well done rulebook. Of course, they had the chance to work a lot on it, especially having five years from the first edition to the second one to really make it an excellent rulebook and also having all the wisdom from the first edition of the game. Cool. Okay, so uh, one punch board. You see that everything falls apart. So this is very nice. We are talking about a uh, linen finish tokens. Very nicely done. The quality is good. Thick cardboard. Good quality, nice print, color, and nice drawings. I like the quality and the feel of the tokens. They look very good. Okay, as you can see, everything falls down very easily from the punch board. No tearing, no damage done. Everything goes out smooth. Okay, cool. Uh, and some additional tokens here. Now we have this gigantic pile of shrink wrapped tiles. We're going to go in and investigate further. More drop down tokens. Okay. And lots of cards that we have in this custom insert and some additional boards. Yeah, I'm very happy to report that uh, uh, the player boards are very, very thick. Excellent quality. You can hear the thickness. I always like to do this because it gives people a good impression of how well done the boards are and they're like planks essentially. And they are also recessed. A section, a recessed spot for your card of the Explorer and then slots to track the different things like uh, health, etc. Very nicely done. I like the fact that it's matte, not uh, glossy, so you don't get any gla uh, gla you know, glaring or uh, shadows or funny lighting depending on the angle. This is what you get with matte printing. Very well done. Look at the thickness of these boards. Excellent, very good quality. Okay, one uh, pouch with the log of the game. Cool. I really like the dice because they didn't use simple D6 or whatever, they used this uh, elegantly illustrated, uh, I would say, excellently matching dice for the game. Very well done. Okay, this is a custom die with different uh, with heart symbol or different iconography and this is also different, but the simple die the black and white are really nice. Very well done. 
and they match the, um, the art of the game. Okay, cool. Ooh, lots of cards. I didn't uh, notice that the chapter cards are that thick. They look like an actual book. Very big. These are monsters and we should have also the explorers somewhere there. These are artifacts and gear. Lots of tokens. Some face infection. Lots of cards. Okay, we have standees because as we said, the monsters and heroes have standees for this game. Black and white. Cool. There they are, the, the pegs, the, um, the markers. Just show you again. We have different wooden markers, custom, with nice silk print. And you use them to track, for example, the health here. There you are. How cool is that? Very nicely done. You see? You cannot fiddle with them, you cannot drop them or push them. They look cool. Very nice. And also, the art is nice on, on the player board. I like it. The dark art. Okay, uh, moving forward. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, maybe first of all open this uh, beast. So let's see what we have in here. I'm sure we have uh, punch boards and tiles and uh, the standees for the heroes, the explorers as the game says, and the monsters, etc, etc, etc. So. Again, the, the thickness of the board is very nice. They don't bend, they look flat, which is cool. Again, a huge, uh, very thick plank-like board for the scenario. Here's where we're going to track the main things of the game and put uh, the cards where we flip as we move through uh, the scenario. We're going to flip them. I'm going to come back to this when I open this deck. Cool. Okay, uh, three punch boards. No need to punch them out because you have seen that the quality of the punch board is excellent. Matte linen finish, excellent quality. I believe these are the heroes. They're very different and uh, unique. And these are additional heroes here. There are unlocked more heroes. So this bronze or goldish stand these, stand for the heroes. And the big uh, tiles stand for the monsters actually there are more much more many heroes here let me pull those tiles out so we can have a quick look also the height of the standees is uh, is well thought i mean what i mean is they're not huge so they're not going to hide the the grid and the art and the details of uh, the map tile Okay, so we can see that we have many, many different explorers, obviously, unlocked with different abilities. Okay, I'm just dropping them here. We have some more here, another four. those two very well done the art is very nice now what we have is a lot of monsters and I'm not gonna go into detail because we're going to make videos for the game so we have the spawn of Antlach Naka the spawn of Orn the spawn of Chthonian for sure the spawn of Cthulhu there is a Cthulhu that I like Looks cool, yeah. The title is very easily readable at the bottom. So this is going to go on a standee. So let me show you quickly the details of the art. 
for the standees of the monsters, that is. Cool. This is one punch board. This is a second punch board. Additional monsters. You can see them here. And here. Cool. Envoy of Hashtool. Yeah, this is Mythos all over. Cthulhu Mythos all over. Cool. And this is what I like as well. This is a different approach to the Cthulhu Mythos. Uh, it's still Cthulhu Mythos, but it has a, a different uh, artistic and um, thematic approach to it. And this is the final punch board with additional monsters. This is Biake. And the witch. And the deep one. Here is the deep one. And here's the witch. Let's see those as well. I mean, I recognize some, even I'm looking upside down the screen. They look very, very familiar. Very nice. Okay, cool. So, three punch board with lots of monsters and lots of heroes and lots of tiles and details uh, to add variety to the game. For sure, these have their specific cards. Look how many monsters there are with different uh, way of playing, different strong things to look for and different weaknesses to exploit. Additional monsters, more monsters, monsters. They all are different. None, no standy is the same like the one next to it. So all these are different type of monsters with different abilities and different cards associated with them, which is nice. All this is full of monsters. Cool. Okay. And now my favorite part is all these tiles, which are double faced tiles and have this amazing, truly amazing art of, uh, for the game. Now, let me show you one after the other so you see the detail. You can see cracks on the floor, you can see some metallic uh, grid to use as a, a corridor to go across, some fires beneath, some chests and some spots to spawn, I assume, here and things to interact on the map tile. So nice. Look at the shadows and the light, how it plays games with the, the tile. The aesthetics are amazing, truly amazing. So I'm going to flip it. And here is different color. This is a more dark bluish tile. All the iconography is very clear. This is excellent quality, matte linen finish tile. So I'm going to do the same with the rest. You can see the corridors. You see the stairs going up and then going down, going around, why they create rooms and things to navigate in, um, in the section. This is a desk, these are some manuscripts or some scrolls. Let me show you the detail, you see, tremendous detail. This is just one square out of this huge grid. Cool. And this is the back. This is greenish. This looks like a sewer or some kind of... Um, there are some kind of uh, plants or decomposed plants or something like that. The bottom. Also some fires. Very nice art. Second tile. This is the third tile. You can see here there is a gap. And there's a plank to go across and some other planks to go from one tile to the other. How cool is that? Really. And all these are combined, so you don't play one tile, you play several tiles. It's time to make up uh, the map board. This is the back of the third tile. A lot of ruins 
from some kind of statues or some kind of ancient uh, worship idols or something like that. Still the detail is tremendous. I love the tiles and the This is another tile. Oh, here is very nicely done, the ten tentacles. Some void. This is very, very fluid, this tile. And here is a typical, uh, let's say, dungeon room or whatever. It's a bit of dark here. And there are some gaps. Next. You see how the different colors and the different shades play very well with uh, with the light, the lighting in the in the room. This is a barrel. You can interact here for sure. There's an icon. And again, this is bluish. Tremendous art. I love it. I have never seen something similar. And this is only a, a, one of the reasons I think I'm going to love this game. The tremendous art, the cool quality, and there is a, a very robust, uh, different co-op dungeon crawler underneath with very nice twists and uh, unique mechanisms. Very nicely done, this section as well. And this looks very different. You see not only the colors of the tiles, but it gives you the impression of a different uh, setting in terms of lighting. This is more uh, clear, maybe it is uh, on a higher level or something like that, than uh, let's say this one. Or what we're checking before, this one. This looks like, a, like a, we're in the basement or something. Yeah, cool. Very nice. Again, the detail, tremendous. Next one. This looks like some kind of floor on a castle or something like that, or on a dungeon higher, higher levels, or at least more lit. A bit of uh, crystals, blue crystals here. Shining light, you see, crystal, blue crystal, blue crystal. Very cool. Uh, we're going to need to try to get away from monsters or trying to fight them uh, as we're trying to accomplish the mission objective. So a lot of cool things going on in this game and uh, they have, they're have they tightly linked with the scenario and uh, what you're trying to do in the chapter to move the story forward. So not only you're just uh, going around smashing the heads of monsters and trying to fight or escape if possible, but uh, you're also trying to progress the story and there is a rich narrative uh, that goes with this game and this is another plus. Cool. You see so many tiles, really. I think there are some of those because we have seen them. Um, there was one page that shows uh, showed some of uh, the details. There were some of the additional scenarios unlocked uh, for the premium edition, but I think even the, the core one has a ton of material. Now this is uh, very different. I mean, look how it compares, and also this one, look how the colors, this is still blue, we have seen a previously a blue one, yeah, look how different this blue is from that blue, and from that green. Amazing details. And this is a grid by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, a 10 by 10 grid, means you have in here 100 squares. Can you imagine guys? I mean if you put four of those together you have 400 squares to move. Very very nicely done. And this is bluish again. You can see the chests here. And again the detail is gorgeous. Okay and now we have those three which are linked with the scenario endings. So the statue of despair, endgame, the horror in the eyes, and the beast. Now, for the next 10-15 uh, seconds I'm going to flip them, so if you don't want to see them, for you not to spoil what you're going to discover, this is why they came face down compared to the rest of the tiles, uh, you can switch on your uh, 
monitor for let's say 30 seconds or no more because then we're going to move to the conclusion so five four three two one let's go this is a horror in the eyes end game tile this is going where we're going to face the final boss in this scenario look at this pile of dead bodies in this like uh, uh, some kind of uh, sacrificial area or something like that sacrifice area uh, amazing art really really nice okay this is the first one this was the horror in the eyes now we go to the statue of despair Ooh, this is completely different this is a very well lit central square uh, where the statue obviously is missing or dropped or something like that uh, it looks like a maze you need to navigate all the way around to go into this area to face the final monster and the last one is the beast the end game for the beast so this is here this is a fairly open space it looks like this is the way the beast is coming onto this stage and we're going to fight him or her on this area so this looks very cool as well so uh, that's it guys so we have three end game tiles all together and let me count what we get in here we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten double face 10 by 10 grid tiles with different art and highly detailed uh, sketches and uh, nice illustrations and we have three different main end game tiles for the three different scenarios so tremendous art on the tiles i really like it so I'm going to finish with showing you some of the art in the game. Let's open some of the cards. So far it's ha it is truly a premium edition. And uh, it looks very nice. Okay, so uh, the card is quite thick. It's good quality. So let me zoom in a bit so you can see the art on the cards, which is great really okay so i'm just going to go through quickly some of them these are the standees so these are the monsters that we have seen the cool the art is very dark after all it is a horror game this is what we would expect but it's very highly detailed i really like the steampunk approach that is around you see around the borders of the card the text is visible, the statistics are visible, the art is gorgeous. These are, um, I think this is a hero, yeah. You see this is the statistics of the adventure, so these are monsters. Let me, you can identify the adventures with uh, the statistics at the bottom, while the monsters don't have statistics at the bottom here, they have different statistics on the right, top right of the card. Okay, so another hero, another hero, another hero. They have the accompanied, uh, accompanying uh, standee, monsters, two more monsters, very well done, the cards are really well done. This is an adventure. Look, this guy is upside down. How cool. Another adventure. This is a monster. This is an adventure. Same here. Look at the art. Really. Tremendous art. I'm going to look uh, up this uh, artist because I think I want to find out what else he, he or she has done and keep him or her on the radar. That's what I mean. The witch. Or this is a mixture of cards for the heroes and the monsters, as you can clearly see. I'm gonna go a bit faster because there's a ton of material here. 
everything has unique art really nice unique art if I may add And also it is uh, different, I mean uh, uh, I've played a lot of games with Cthulhu or with Dark Horror theme I haven't seen this type of art before, so this is also something, a plus in my book uh, This is not done again, at least in terms of aesthetics Extremely different from what we have seen in all the Arkham Horror and other games that use this uh, Cthulhu mythos theme. Okay, so this is the main uh, deck of cards for Heroes and Monsters. Let me go quickly. I'm not going to read because I'm not. I don't want to make any spoilers. Uh, the chapters. For this, I would suggest not to mess with uh, the sequence until you start reading a bit more. This is a big, uh, a big size card. So there is end game. There are numbered chapters with a lot of text. You need to place tokens there. There are some explanations. This is the end. This is the end game. There are dividers. A lot of fluff. I mean, there is no point of showing you something because uh, they all have to do with the story. So. The art is tremendous. This separates obviously the different uh, sections. Ooh, this is really cool. Okay, so maybe I'll read just one section. So again, if you don't want to hear anything, I'm just going to read a paragraph to give a bit of impression about uh, the theme of uh, the chapter cards. So, we're talking about two. Uh, Ward corridors. The corridors hum incessantly the, lo the low tone pulsating in our heads like a swarm of locusts. The bizarre scribbles on the walls and the jagged cracks in the floors only exhibit the dull vibration in our brains. Everything twists and turns. I can't decipher if we're walking on the ground or the ceiling really feels just beyond our grasp. Our minds move in equally warped directions, overflowed with unnatural urges. Shadows move all around us, taunting us, tormenting us. And there I'm going to stop because there is a lot of story there and I don't want to make any spoilers. But this is the fluff and then you have the actually uh, mechanistical uh, text which shows you what you progress. So, very well done because you can see that all this huge pile of cards has a lot of story and a lot of things to follow. Just be careful not to uh, mess with the sequence because I suspect that they have you'll spend time putting them in the correct order later on so keep that there and then put it in the correct spot back okay so the last thing i'm going to show is a bit of um, the different cards from the other additional decks before we conclude our video Lots and lots of text on these cards, as you can see. Face infection. The bizarre infection left small lesions on all over the face that made me feel uneasy. When I learned in for a closer when I went, leaned in for a closer look, razor sharp teeth began to push the way out of the holes. And it when an explorer stores essence, increase master thread. And you can see some sharp teeth teeth coming out of this uh, this shed is a bit of maybe let me make the camera focus because it's having a difficulty to focus okay now you can see uh, the card and again not going to read all of those I'll show you some of there's a lot of text here so a lot of love and thought and work has gone into putting all this together obviously Cool. Okay. Next deck. This has different back from this one. All these are the same. Again, there is veterans, the secret, 
who can rob, lose hope, draft, vicious drug, cracking the seal, caustic fog, haunted floor, and so on and so forth. Lots of things here as well. Third deck, there are quite a lot of cards in all of those actually. And the third deck has the same back like this one. Let me check if all of those are the same. Yeah. Plus maybe one from here. So let's put this at the side. And then this deck here shows actually things like trapping the holes, mending slumber, gift from nothingness, protective layer, cosmic races, lots of fluff and lots of text here as well. And these are the same like this one, which make a huge deck of cards. And the last one has a different back. Now, there are three decks, four decks remaining actually. And these are a bit uh, longer than the normal size cards. Let me show you the small cards. A bit more long, longer. And I think they have to do with uh, gear, equipment, and stuff that we can find and use against our fight with the monsters and with the darkness. Let me open them quickly to give you an idea of what you find inside. Okay, here we have things like a uh, isopiestic slingshot, charmed pouch, hardware, holy symbol, spectral flasher, etc. What I like with this is that uh, there are different type of um, uh, weapons that they have schematics that they look like Leonardo da Vinci's schematics or something like that, drawings in any sense or at least drawings from an ancient tome or some medieval pages, something like that. The text here is uh, very clear, the iconography is clear, the numbers are clear, and you have lots and lots of different cards in this deck. Next, you have a slightly thicker deck from the other remaining and these exactly more cards with gear and all of these are gear cards crystal figurine tenebrous alembric so on and so forth so I'm putting them in this slot These are a bit mixed, so you need to separate them. The music box. Circumv circumnavigator. I'm going to pull them all out to show you the how many show you how many in total they are from this purple back deck because they're quite a lot actually it's good to get a perspective of how many you get you see a lot from those next we have these cards which have additional things I think they're more advanced tactical manual displacer vest Ritual Clock, okay, not going to go into a lot of detail, just to show you how many they are, and they have again the same anatomy. I think these are, yeah, wait a minute, these are purple. So they should be in this deck, cool. Now, say, saying that, we managed to get those separated. This is the second deck. We have a third deck Man before the end 
which is again equipment. I don't remember the difference between these different type of equipment, but there are many, 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 many cards. And the last and final deck. quite big again and has weapons I think because I see a bouncing hair bat, hand mortar, puncturing revolver, teleportabilis, rotovolver and so on and so forth. All of these look like guns and weapons that you can use to equip and fight the monsters. Many, many, many weapons. Okay, so this concludes uh, our unboxing video. You can see that we have a lot of material and a lot of quality material actually as well. There are a lot of things included in the game. Most of all, besides the nice art and the nice quality production, we see that there is a lot of uh, uh, things to explore, a lot of narrative and a lot of adventure to explore. So looking forward to get this on the table, to have a bit, uh, a couple of plays and then uh, we can come back with a how to play video and some additional thoughts on the game overall. So hope you enjoyed this video. This is a highly uh, anticipated game I was looking forward to. Looks very nice. First signs look good. I'm looking forward for, the, uh, for what comes next from Machina Arcana. Till next time, many thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.